Hi guys, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use the Razor Testing Module. Now the main question is, what is the Razor Testing Module? Now the Razor Testing Module is a tool that allows you to test items off pallets of equipment that came from recycling and allows you to pass or fail that equipment in order to bring it into the resale side of the application or leave it behind in the scrap side. Now the main question we get all the time is why and when will we use this tool? Now scenario one is your client sends equipment to your company and they ask you to audit and provide a pass fail report where you'll pay your client potentially per unit price for the equipment of value and potentially a per pound price for the scrap items. This tool will allow you to seamlessly track this information and pass it back to the settlement area so your accounting department could pay your client accurately according to your contract. Scenario two is when you receive equipment in a scrap and you would just like to track the source of items and maintain full transparency in the system. Typically in this scenario, you'll just take the pallet and send it to your testing department where they'll harvest off and pull all items of value and leave the balance of the pallet as scrap. The scrap items are typically items of lower value that are not worth collecting the make, model, manufacture, and other attributes because of the reason they're staying behind as scrap and you don't wanna waste the money on labor to collect meaningless information that is not required by the contract. So we're gonna start off by going to recycling inventory detail. Typically, all items of value that's gonna go through the testing workflow would go into the testing workflow tab. In this example, we're gonna test equipment from Elliott Lewis, pallet 34815, which is laptops complete and a unit count of 13. So we'll start off by selecting the checkbox and then hitting test at the top of the screen. Now in this screen, you can notice that there is an order type at the top, which is the order number, a test number, which is the testing workflow, and the customer where the equipment came from. You could also see the user that's working on the equipment. Other things to note on the screen is the testing summary block. In the testing summary block, it basically goes over the starting weight of the pallet. In this case, it's 80 pounds. The tested weight, so this kind of tracks the productivity of how many items you've gone through on that pallet and the quantity of items that have been tested. So in this case, there are 13 units. And there's also processing notes your receiving team or testing team can input. Now in this test, we're gonna receive in an E6410 laptop. You would start off by placing your cursor in the model field and begin typing. You'll select the particular model you've requested, select the manufacturer, generate a unique identifier. Basically the unique identifier is a tracking ID that allow us to track that particular item throughout the system from a resale standpoint or scrap standpoint. The next selection is the serial field. You could either scan the exact serial if the contract requires it, or you could generate an auto-generated serial number. Most of these fields are not required, but it's up to the business workflow if they are required. If they are required, you'll see that the field would actually be pink and wouldn't allow you to add the item until all fields are collected. So we'll move on to the weight field. This is a 4.8 pound unit. There's a quantity of one. Condition is used. You could assign a location. A lot of times people will bring in equipment, assign them to their workstation, and then use the relocate feature and auto relocate them potentially to a bin or a bulk location. If you need to search a location, you can hit the update field here and that'll open up the location search box. 
Now you have your notes field. So if there's any special notes you want to indicate, potential uh, you know crack on the unit. Product type, this is the categorization of the item. You could either type in as a free field or select the pre-designated categories that are tied to that particular master item. Now, one of the key steps is, is the audit status step. You'll either have to select the item as scrap or resale. This is essentially a pass or fail. If you select resale, that means it's going to go into the resale side of the application, meaning that you could add it to a sales order, search it in inventory. If you choose scrap, it's going to aggregate and summarize it at the end and leave it in the scrap side of the application on a pallet. So in this example, we're going to indicate this is a resale item and we'll collect the various other specs. So if you choose to, you could collect the CPU speed, hard drive size, memory size, Now, one thing to note is right now for this attribute set, we only have four specific attributes that are being collected for laptops. In a lot of companies, there potentially might be 15, 20 other attributes that potentially could be collected. You also have the option to use an auto spec capture tool that we offer that basically you would plug in a USB stick or connect it to your network and do a pixie boot and that would collect the information from the laptop, desktop, or server. So if it, there is a match for that particular unit, these specs would have been auto spec captured. Now, once the item is complete, you would hit add. And you have the option to print a label. You click yes or no if you do not want to click the label. If you choose to print the label after the fact, you could select the item, verify your printer selection and label size, and hit print. Now, a lot of times, people have many of the same items with the same specs. If this is the case, you have the option to hit bulk add. By using bulk add, you can select the quantity of items you'll be adding and you have the option to generate a UID, which is the unique identifier tracking ID we mentioned earlier, or you have the option to auto-generate the serial. A lot of times, you'd want to auto-generate the UID, but not generate the serial number. When you hit generate, this will give you the option to place your cursor in the serial field and begin scanning. And you can collect the actual serial numbers and move quickly through the assets. Once done, hit save. And this is going to give you the option to print the bulk labels. So again, make your selections on the printer and label type and hit print. If you choose not to, hit close. You can see as I'm moving through the items, so far we've collected six assets. You can see the progress bar, total tested weight, and quantity tested so far. You also have the option uh, to delete items if you made a mistake. So you could select one or more and hit bulk delete, and that would delete the item out of inventory. So in the next example, we're going to bring in an E6420. We'll generate the UID serial, verify the weight. Let's say this was six pounds. Condition, notes, we'll move this to resale. So all this information we're collecting is going to be visible in the settlement screen. So if you're going to pay your client after the fact, after you tested and audited the equipment, you're going to have full visibility into all the specs of the unit. And this would help determine the pricing that you're going to pay, potentially a per pound price or per unit price. 
And one of the key things is the audit status. So if an item was marked scrap, potentially it would be a Latitude E6420, but potentially had a broken screen, smashed keyboard. So in, in that case, you might mark it as scrap, and still you would have the flexibility of paying your client a little extra for that particular item in case you were going to part harvest it. So once done, hit add, and we'll keep moving forward. So I'm going to move through this pretty quickly, and we'll keep receiving in the same type of items. So once this order is complete, you would hit complete test. But in the example here, I'm gonna make an update to one of these units and mark it as scrap. Now, when you mark an item as scrap, you have to choose a commodity. A lot of times people choose either, if you're working on laptops, you might want to choose laptops just to have that visibility in the settlement side. So you do laptop scavenge, laptops resale, it's up to you. Now you have the next option is to select the workflow. Typically when you're going through an audit, you're taking equipment, you're testing it, you're either marking it resale or scrap. Most items that are marked scrap, you could send to your consumed weight, which is basically going to be your work in progress in the future. So it won't necessarily bring it back into your active inventory on the floor, but it would keep it in the work in progress weight, which means eventually you'll receive against that weight to generate a finished good. If it's important to track where this equipment went, you wouldn't send it to consumed if it was a scrap item. You might want to rebuild the pallet and you know build a final pallet and send it to the final goods. It's up to you. So we're going to do an update here. Now once you're complete, you can put some notes. And you would hit the complete test button. Now what this is going to do is going to bring up a testing summary dialog and you're going to have a few options that you would have to make. So you can see here it was untested weight of 2 pounds, uh, total items tested were 14 and a total uh, original weight of 80 pounds. So you can see here resale items, 13 items sent to resale, 72 pounds. One item was marked scrap which was 6 pounds and there was a tear discrepancy potentially. So in these type of cases, you would just um, pick mixed electronics or some sort of a commodity. You might have some sort of waste commodity or potential cardboard for this type of discrepancy, or potentially you would have a discrepancy commodity. Uh, it's dependent on how, you, how your organization operates. And I would typically send that into consumed. So once you're done, you would hit complete test. And what this did was close out pallet 34815. So we went back in the inventory detail, you're not going to see pallet 34815. It's now complete and you would find it either in your history or consumed weight. So in this case you see it right here. Laptop's complete and it's been fully processed and tested. Now just to give you a quick example, we could jump to the settlement on this. search for inbound 2373 double click it now if we jump over to the process and audit view and click the audit test tab you would see all the assets that have been processed and you could see the various conditions scrap resale and if you needed to, you could pull report 
that would show you all the specs and then you can have the option either to individually price the items or you could price the items in your Excel report and import the list right back into the settlement to close this order out.